Hey guys, we're going to day 12 Unlocked in 30, where we're going to talk about testing your material. In the physical therapy and athletic training world, we call that the valuation. So if you've ever been to the doctor, if you've ever been to someone where they had a medical exam on you or just in general testing your performance, a lot of times they just want to kind of evaluate you and see where your baseline is as far as, you know, how are you performing? Are there any areas of either weakness or maybe areas that your body's not responding to very well? Uh, in general, like where can we, what can we work on? And so when we're testing your material, you know, our four categories on the nutritional aspect, we talk about the acid versus alkaline. You know, on a lot of this, I would just say like, again, go look back at the, the scale when you're looking at your foods and you can see that from the green, uh, the alkalinity of the, the foods are usually on the, on the green part of that scale, go all the way back to the red where it's more acidic. So the more you can sell on the acid, ver the, uh, the alkaline versus the acidic, then that's better. Now for testing, there's, there's different, there's different uh, pH scales that you can do. Uh, one is the Lismus test, and that's one basically you can put on the tongue and see how acidic you are. Uh, there are the the P test, basically, or you know that way when you when you're looking at the uh, the Lismus test and, and uh, seeing the results of it, you kind of have a good understanding of where you need to be or you know where your body is at in general. So you know th those are kind of good evaluations for the acid or alkaline. And I'm trying to give you more or less the strategy, the highlights of what is the uh, the main thing to look at here. You know what's been in my eyes or my opinion been probably the the, the heavily weighed test, because there's a lot of tests out there, to be honest with you. In our physical therapy, they give us a million different tests to, to test every little joint, angle, muscle, that kind of thing. And, and reality is a lot of times the, the validity or even or just the success, the specificity of the test is very, can be like 40, 50, 60%. So you're like, okay, is this reality, real, realistically, is this a good test? And so uh, going back to your nutritional one, you know, the acid versus alkaline, you know, we definitely look at that. When I'm looking at you know evaluation and measurement, you know you can also do uh, BMI, uh, your body mass index. That one is not really, I would say, um, a really great one to to rule off of. It does kind of give you a broad general overview, but in general, you want to you, if you want to you want to get down and deep to it, I would do like a, a good body weight scan. And there's different different um, uh, machines out there that give you this, where you probably have to pay a little bit of money up front just to do this, but it gives you a good assessment of where you're at body fat wise percentage. So you know, how much uh, peripheral fat, the fat outside of the organs, the visceral fat, the fat that you want along the organs. Now that one's, it's okay to have a little bit higher content on the visceral fat versus the peripheral. The peripheral one's what we want to get rid of. That's the one that there's a lot of toxins and chemicals basically built up in the body that just kind of get pushed out. And the more of that you have, honestly, the slower your metabolism is and the harder it is to, to basically, the, amount, the higher amount of acid it is and the, the harder it is to get rid of it. So those are two uh, simple ones. Uh, Performance wise, you know, there's different ones from your strength your mobility to your speed uh, that you can look at. I would say for, for this purpose of this video, uh, the main ones you wanna look at is your mobility. Now this one, we're gonna be coming out with a series of, of exercises, stretches that you can go through. That way you can see, you know, which ones are, are gonna be a good test to see where you're at. You know, right now I think most people basically just use the basic ones like your quads, your hamstrings, the piriformis by going through certain movements or certain stretches to see where you're at. Uh, basically also for the shoulders, you got the pec, pec major minor where you do the T's and the Y's in the corner. And that kind of tells you also that how, to play, how it plays into your neck. Um, so if these are tight, then you're restricted in your muscles to activate, which limits how much force you can do in the gym. Uh, Speed-wise, same thing. You know, uh, going back, I had a, one guy actually, he was training for the combine, uh, running his linebacker, running a four, I think it was four, five, four for his 40. And you know, I was watching him do his sprints and I could tell like he wasn't getting his leg up. And then you know, went in there, did a couple of stretches on his hip flexors, release the, the quad because the quad actually attaches the front of your pelvis and that can uh, alter the mechanics of you know how fast you, or you're going through the motion, uh, the range of motion, but also the pull on the back. And uh, we released his quad, his hip flexor, he dropped it, I think it was from a four, sorry, it was a four seven, he dropped it to a four five four. And so it was you know, a pretty big drastic difference in speed right there, just having that extra motion. Uh, so you know, performance wise, it's a big difference when you're, when you're looking at your test this all again plays into what is your end goal with the with the uh, performance side. You know, are you looking to lose weight? Are you looking just to get more toned up? You know, in in, in certain areas, maybe like if someone's in CrossFit or Orange Theory, they go by different tests on maybe their speed or how how many reps they did, or even like for a distance running, you know, how long length of the run versus the time. So different tests there. Uh, as far as recovery, you can do different parameters as far as the amount of swelling with if you have a say swelling with an area like a knee or ankle, you know, you can do measurements on that to assess how much uh, circumferential uh, growth there is in that area because of the swelling. Um, probably, you know, what you want to look at it more so is uh, from the recovery side is, 
is uh, I, a lot of times I say honestly, just go with your feeling because you're gonna go off of a pain level. <laughs> And uh, zero to 10, 10 being the worst. So I try to keep it below a five or a four, honestly. Typically in the, the one to two is fine, you know, as far as continuing the next day. But your body's gonna tell you a lot on the recovery part is like, you know, if you're really sore, you're hurting, are you gonna, are you gonna keep pushing forward as far as that workout goes because of the pain level? So recovery again, because our, our main goal is like, what are the main things that we wanna look at? There's so many, so many things out there we don't get overwhelmed, but you know, if something really mattered the most, I would say, you know, going off your pain scale. Uh, 10 being the worst, one being a zero, or, or sorry, zero, uh, one, zero to one to 10, <laughs> uh, 10 being the worst, one being the least, uh, try to keep it below five. Ideally, if you're going to go into a workout the next day, no more than a two or three. So uh, anything else is probably pushing it more into the injury aspect. So injury wise, you know, physical therapy, rehab, medical, we do a lot of exams called evaluations. And so we take through multiple tests and that one is a little bit way more in depth. Again, if you have any specific questions on you know, what you should be uh, doing for yourself or any concerns, then let me know and I can help point you in the right direction. Because we all have different tests, you know, that's physical therapist, athletic trainer is different than a chiropractor. I was just on the phone with a, a guy that works for the, he's the chiropractor for the St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals. And then when he's taking his athletes or his clients through different tests, you know, they're a lot different than what we'll, we'll take our athletes through, you know, because we're all looking at something a little bit different, even though our end goal is pretty much the same to get that person healthy you know, back into the, the routine or to their performance of whatever it is they're, again, depending on their, their sport, their age or their, um, their inclination to get back to work. So anyways, I hope that helps. Like I said, it's kind of a highlight, but I want you to just think about more on the strategy and again of, you know, what are you testing and what does that look like on your end? It always starts with your purpose. So what is your goal? Um, you know, start with the, the goal in mind and then work your way backwards. And that's usually always simple, easy way to go about doing it. So I hope that helps.